John 8, 31 through 36 reads something like this. I'm reading out of the NIV. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Verse 32, then you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. See, somebody knew what I was going to do. Got to be ready to say amen at the right parts. Verse 33, this is what we're getting into today. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Verse 34, Jesus responds, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Thank you. Verse 35. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. And y'all ladies, listen to me. A daughter belongs to it forever too. <laughs> Verse 36. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Amen. If you believe that the son has set you free, you make some noise in this place today. If you're taking notes in this place today, I've entitled this message, No Longer Slaves. No Longer Slaves. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for each and every person that's decided in their heart to be here today. But God, before the earth began to spin on its axis, you knew each and every person that would be here. You're not surprised that somebody showed up on January 12th to the Miramar Cultural Center to be a part of culture. You're not surprised by that. God, I thank you that they made the decision to get up this morning and get here because there's something that you want to tell them that will change their life forever. God, may I lie down and just rise up. Don't let these words be my own, but let them come directly from your throne room of grace. God, I pray that hearts, minds, and ears are open and receptive to a word that will always and forever be about your son, Jesus. I pray for the one that needs to hear it the most. May you touch them right where they are. I pray that by the time they leave here today, they're no longer slaves. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, everybody said, somebody give Jesus a shout of praise. You can do better than that. Fine, let me give you a good reason. Do you know that 53 people answered the altar call last week to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord? If that doesn't make you cheer, I don't know what else to say. 53! In one Sunday, I think that's phenomenal. And uh, as long as we're here, we're going to plunder hell and populate heaven. Amen. Amen. No longer slaves. So last week we said that whom the son, we talked about that, that the son, Jesus, Jesus is not just grace. Jesus is truth. Oftentimes we preach a lot of grace, but don't preach a lot of truth. Jesus is grace and truth. And if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. The problem is we found out that the reason a lot of people don't walk around in freedom is because they don't know the truth. They know their truth. There's a big difference between your truth or my truth and the truth. Your truth, my truth is whatever's comfortable for us. This is why people take uh, doctrines and, and, and gospels and different religions and they take all the pieces that they like that don't challenge them and then they turn it into their own religion. Like some people that say they are Christians have some of the strangest forms of Christianity I've ever heard of because they're just mixing up a bunch of stuff because they want to do what's comfortable for them. When you do what's comfortable for you, that's your truth. But we don't believe in your truth. Because here's the problem with your truth. Your truth is based on you. You are, the, you, you are the beginning and the end of your own truth. If your truth is right, then we all must bow down and worship you. But the Bible doesn't say that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that your truth is Lord. No, no, no. It says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. We bow down and worship him because he is the truth. And I love the truth. Because it is only the truth of Jesus that will set you free. Your truth makes you comfortable. The truth challenges you. 
There's a lot of things in this word that literally challenge me as a human being. There's things that have happened all through our history. And I say, God, why certain things are not for me to know on this side of heaven. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God a lot of questions. But just because I don't understand it doesn't mean that I don't trust it. The truth will set you free. The reality is, and we talked about it last week, if it does not challenge you, it will not change you. A lot of people want to be different in 2020. Oh, I'm done with 2019. Leave that over there. But you have brought in a 2019 mentality into a 2020 outlook. And wondering why maybe already now in the 12th day of the year, you're not getting the results that you were looking for. Because you still think the same way. If you want a different result, you must think differently. The truth allows me, my truth allows me to be comfortable. The truth will challenge me. Jesus, the truth will challenge me to be better. The truth does not challenge you. It will never change you. But see, here's the thing. Once you know the truth, you got to be honest with yourself. You got to be real honest with yourself. Because here's the thing about freedom. You can't live in freedom when you're delusional. <laughs> Come back next week. I'll be nicer. I promise. You can't live a true life of freedom if you are delusional. It is an idiosyncratic belief. It is a particular or a peculiar belief that contradicts reality. That's what delusional means. A belief specific to you that contradicts reality or a rational argument. Y'all ever met a delusional person? Some of y'all quiet. <laughs> Might be you. I, I know some delusional people, man. And I love them with the love of the Lord. And if I could be honest, I'm not going to pick on anybody today. I'm, I'm going to point the finger at me. There's been moments in my life where I was highly delusional. And because I've grown from this, I will share this with you today. I will be transparent. I will be open. I will poke fun at myself. There's been times in my life where I was delusional. When I was 25, in the prime of my young life, I thought that I could do anything. I was finally able to rent a car without an issue. <laughs> I was living on my own. It's my own man. I felt good about it, but I had a problem. You see, um, I was 25 years old and I woke up and I looked in the mirror and I started to notice something. I started to notice. I love you. Started to notice that my beautiful locks were starting to leave me. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me because I don't want anybody. Oh, you're talking about bald people. I'll never come back. I'm bald. I started to notice that they were leaving. And I, I ain't going to lie. I was delusional about it for a while. I was like, ah, it's, it's, it's good. I told the barber, I was like, yeah, just go real low. They won't even notice. <laughs> Started wearing hats, you know. This was the era when, like, do-rags were still. I had a, a do-rag on with no do. <laughs> I was delusional. I was trying to get waves. My waves were choppy. It was bad. There was no motion in my ocean. I was like, man, what can I do to hide this, man? And I ain't want to go to route where I start like, you know, putting stuff in my... Now, here's what I'm going to say. If, if you ball and you want to look like George Jefferson, man, God bless you. God bless... I'm not coming against you. Because some dudes, they rock it with pride. They don't care. They, they pull up to the scene with they seal and missing. They don't care. Some dudes don't care. I ain't mad at... Like, I'm not mad at you. Rock, you rock that George Jefferson with pride if that's what you want to do. 
But me, I, I was delusional. I was trying to hold on. Man, I, I tried I try for dear life to hold on. And one day I had to make a decision. It's like, man, I'm young, but a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And I took that Gillette and I shaved it and I went to the beach because, you know, my, 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 my head had never been tan before in life. So, like, I, I, I looked like I was sickly. I looked like I had problems. Like, I needed to tan this thing. Okay? So, I tanned it, tanned my dome, and, you know, like, now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of used to it. I'm 38, man. It was a long time ago. Like, I honestly, and you can, you can laugh if you want, I can't even imagine having hair now. Life is so much easier. Like, like I, I just, I just want to tell some dudes in here that maybe were delusional like me. I want to give you some freedom today. <laughs> if it's getting too low, it's time to let it go. <laughs> if your hairline is far back, it is time to subtract. <laughs> if you have an eagle's nest, it is time to put it to rest. In the words of Elsa, let it go. Let it go. It don't want to grow no more. Let it go. If you got a comb over, it's time to start over. Since I have shaved my head, I have some freedom. Do you know how much I saved since I haven't been back to the barber in the last 13 years? It's been amazing. I feel great. Sorry, barbers. I don't need you. I, just, I wake up, I say, oh, and I'm gone. It don't take me no time to get ready in the morning. I live in a freedom because I stop being delusional. You cannot live in true freedom if you are delusional, which leads me to the verse that I just read you. This was Jesus's issue. It was hard for them to convince them of who he was because they were highly delusional. The Hebrew people, the Israelites, the Jews, they were crazy. Like they made, they made the most grandiose statements that were so false. Like they're telling Jesus like they can convince the truth of what the truth is. Look at this. This is, this is crazy. John 8, 33, it says, they answered him. This is after he says, and the truth will set you free. They answered him. We are Abraham's descendants. That's just how I feel like they sound in my head. And have never, have never, have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be free? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the most delusional statement in the entire Bible. Jewish people, Israel, the Hebrew people looked truth in their face and said, we have never been slaves to anyone? Really? Let's take a journey through history, shall we? Yes, we know that in the 1700s B.C. that Abraham, he settled in the land of Canaan and God made him a promise that your descendants will be as numerous as the sands on the seashore. But he had a son named Isaac and Isaac had a son named Jacob and Jacob had 12 sons who became the 12 tribes of Israel. One son in specific, his name was Joseph. And we know his story. He's the one that got thrown in a pit, got thrown in a prison. But then eventually, after the entire story is done, he ends up as second in command in Egypt. What he did was so great because he literally stopped Egypt from failing and falling during a famine because he stored up resources so that they were the most prosperous nation in the world at the time. A young Hebrew boy saved an entire nation. What happens is they are, they are so thankful that the Jews come to Egypt and they begin to, to, to multiply and they begin to populate the space and they lived in harmony for a moment. But eventually the generation of Joseph and those that 
he had bore and the generations after him finally died off until a new generation developed that did not remember what he had done. And the Egyptians said, these people are too numerous. If we don't enslave them, they will, they will overpower us. We are descendants of Abraham. We have never been slaves. An entire nation of people was enslaved by the Egyptians, the very descendants of Abraham. We believe that this happened somewhere around the 1500s to the 1200s BC. We don't know exactly when historians are still trying to figure out. But then look what happens after that. Yes, we know that they get freed and they and they go to the promised land. But then in about 722 BC, something happens. The Assyrians, what they do, they conquer the northern kingdom. Now, Israel's broken up into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was Israel. The southern kingdom was, was Judah. But we see once again after they leave Egypt now the Assyrians have conquered them we've never been slaves though oh but then it goes on after that we get to around 586 BC and we all heard of King Nebuchadnezzar he comes in the man from Babylon and what does he do he ransacks the southern kingdom of Judah and enslaves entire populations of people he tears down the temple, but you've never been slaves, but now you're slaves in Babylon. You've been exiled for 70 plus years. Finally, thank God for the king of Persia in 538 BC that lets them go. But just when they think they have their freedom, the Greeks come in about 30, uh, excuse me, three, uh, 332 uh, BC and Alexander the Great then conquers the Hebrew people. But it doesn't end there. yes. Eventually, there's a rebellion in about 167 B.C., but they don't have their freedom for long because in 63 B.C., then Rome comes in. Rome comes in, led by Pompey the Great, and he conquers Israel. And then guess what Rome does? They take the great Herod, Herod the Great, and they made him king of Israel. But guess what? Rome was the governing body. All of that happened before Jesus ever shows up on the scene. And these people have the audacity to say, we are sons of Abraham. We've never been slaves of anyone. There are historical accounts that I have just read to you to let you know how enslaved this nation has always been. They had a vast history of slavery, not just Cultural, not just racial, but political slavery. But they thought that they had never been slaves. They were delusional. I just want somebody to hear the word of the Lord today. It's time for you to open your eyes and start seeing things for what they are. Like, like some of us just live with delusions of grandeur about who we are, but we're not addressing the reality of the situation. This year won't be any different from last year if you keep lying to yourself. You got to be honest. Be honest with yourself. Don't become. See, here's the problem. You know why they didn't believe what Jesus was saying? They had too much pride. We've never been slaves. Shut up. Don't allow your pride to put you in a prison. Don't allow your pride. They allowed their pride to make them slaves. It's like, 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 like some of us. We get stuck on the road because we allow our pride to not accept the gas money that somebody was trying to give us. Some of our pride has allowed our fridges to stay empty because somebody was in front of you at the grocery store trying to pay for your groceries. But you was like, no, nah, I'm good. I got it. Like so, so, some of us have gotten sicknesses that we probably could have prevented if we would have pushed pride aside and got an early checkup. But now that everything is escalated, now you want the doctor to save you when a simple checkup could have stopped it from even starting. Put your pride to the side. I'm just trying to be real practical. Yes, everything is spiritual, but I think you can find some practicality in spiritual things. Like, like, like so, some of you started a business or you had an idea or you had an invention and it failed in 2019. And it's not that the idea wasn't good. It's not that the idea wasn't a God idea, but you had so much pride. You never let anybody help you. 
Don't live in a prison of your pride. Some people will remain lonely for the rest of their life because they have too much pride to say, I'm sorry. Or too much pride to accept an apology. There's people right now that are stuck in, in, in abusive relationships. And if you are out there, I am praying for you. I want you to know that this is a house of refuge. You don't ever have to feel like you're alone. Don't allow your pride to deny that that relationship has been toxic from day one, though. You saw all the signs and you chose to ignore it. I want you to know that this is a house of refuge. If you are willing to humble yourself and put your pride aside, there are open arms here to help you. But even if we can't help you, guess what? God's arms are always open, ready, willing, and able to help you because he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So in your loneliest moments when you feel like you are hurt, remember that he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Don't let your pride stop you from getting help. Be honest with yourself. I love what the Bible says, because the only thing that you can use to combat pride is humility. The Bible says in Psalms 149, 4, it says, for the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. He crowns the humble with victory. Do you want a crown of victory because of your humility or do you want chains of slavery because of your pride? You have to be very honest with yourself in 2019 because when you're honest with yourself, you can admit it. When you're honest, you can admit you have a problem. I promise you it won't take too much longer for me to land this plane. When you're honest, you can admit you have a problem. Here's the thing. We all got a problem. It's a sin problem. It's a big, big problem. For the Bible says that all have sinned. Don't say some. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. John 8, 34, after Jesus uh, 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 hears the delusional thoughts of the Jewish people, listen to his response. He says, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. This is why, this, let me tell you why this is a powerful statement, because first he clarifies what he's talking about. You see, they thought uh, he was talking about maybe political bondage or cultural bondage bondage or racial bondage no he was talking about spiritual bondage this is a he's like i want to let you know you got a you got a sin problem you got a you got a you got a heart problem but not only do you have a heart problem i'm not just going to address what it is i'm going to address who i'm talking to who is he talking to he says he says i love this everyone who sins is a slave to sin who, who has this problem Jesus was talking to folks that have a habitual sin problem. Folks who continue to sin. You can't stop sinning. You can't figure out why. He's like, hey, if you keep on doing, when you keep sinning, like some, some of you have sinned and then you are in a battle. You are, you, are, you are fighting and God is working on you. That's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking to those habitual offenders. Those people that continually do the same thing and you take the grace of God for granted. He says those who, those who sin, everyone who sins, those who continually sin is a slave to sin. Do you know what that word slave means in the Greek? It's broken down to a word called doulos. Listen to this word slave. Listen to what it means. It's so powerful. I want you to catch this because this could free somebody. It means one who gives himself wholly to another's will. This is not the kind of slavery where somebody takes you against your will and forces you to do something. Yes, that's a form of slavery. This, this word slave, doulos, in the Greek says one who gives himself. You gave yourself up. I want, I want to break this notion that is like, like it may be, be, be fun to preach, but it's just totally not true. I want to break this devil made me do it syndrome. It's just not factual. It's delusional if you think the devil made you do it. The devil didn't. First of all, the devil can't be everywhere at the same time. And then you got to ask yourself, are you really doing what you need to be doing for the devil to be concerned with you? Like all the people, all the seven and a half billion people in the world. Well, I'm coming after you today. No, stop. The devil didn't make you do it. You wholly 
willfully surrendered yourself to it. So what am I saying? You made yourself a slave to it. Nobody made you do it. You made, your, what am I, what is, what is Jesus trying to get them to understand? You always have a choice. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. You always have a choice. You always have a choice. I'm not going to talk about y'all today. I'm going to talk about me because I know I got problems. I'm trying to be healthier in the new year. And I brought up some of my vices. I always got a choice, though. See, 2019, I, I blame my dad by on the food. I was like, man. They just be looking so scrumptious and so good. Why they, why they put that in front of me? Like, but I always had a choice, though. Like, like, these are from the devil. <laughs> these sweet potato fries. I love, and you know what? I, 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 I like try to, I, I try to give myself some rationale. It's sweet potatoes, though. <laughs> and like, like but, but it's not, it's not just sweet potatoes, though. It's sweet potatoes, vegetable oil, there's uh, rice flour, there's cane sugar, there's tapioca starch, there's corn starch, there's dextrin. What is a dextrin? There's sea salt, chipotle pepper. Ooh, that sounds good. Onion powder, garlic powder, natural, fla natural flavor. When they say natural flavor, but they don't tell you what it is, that's a problem. That means it's probably not natural. Salad, mustard powder, distilled vinegar, mustard, sea salt, turmeric, paprika, yeast extract, spices, glue, Conic, I don't even know what that is. Acid, xanathin gum. What is xanathin gum? And top it off with some cilantro. This is not sweet potatoes. This is a sweet potato. I got a choice. I could eat demonic fries or I could go back to the source and put this bad boy in the oven with a little bit of oil on it, sprinkle a little dash of sea salt and pepper, open it up and go to town and be as healthy as I want to be. I have a choice. I told myself, cause it's green tea is healthy. Premium blue, brewed blend of green tea using filtered water, high fructose corn syrup, glucose, fructose syrup, honey, citric acid, natural flavors, absorbic acid, vitamin C, ginseng root extract. What? All I wanted was some green tea. <laughs> Boil your own water and make the green tea. You have a choice. You know what make me mad about these though? They always on sale. That's what make me mad about these. That's what frustrates me. Like God, you, you know when I get that, it's that hint to lie. It's that hint though. That, oh, that hint be hitting, man. That hint of lie be destroying my life though. Cause it's not just corn. Corn, vegetable oil, canola and or sunflower. Like you don't know which one it is? Maltodrexin? What is that? Made from corn. Well, just give me the corn. Salt, sugar, natural flavors, dextrose. C like, what is that? But I love you so. This is why I get the Tostitos, because it's hard to open this than it is to open this bag. This sweet corn that comes from God's green earth. If I just put a little sea salt on it with a, with, a, with a little bit of olive oil and I wrap it in foil and I just leave it on the grill for a little bit. I want a hint of lime, no. <laughs> oh, this is my favorite one. This is my kryptonite right here. This is my kryptonite right here. 
It's fruit snacks, yo. They so chewy and delicious. And, 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 and you know how they get me, though? It says, made with real fruit. <laughs> it's healthy, guys. Fruit puree, corn syrup, modified corn starch, gelatin, Concord, a uh, grape juice from concentrate, citric acid, lactic acid, uh, natural and artificial flavors that you can't tell me what they are, uh, uh, ascorbic acid, uh, what is alpha tofa ferro? What is that? Acetate, acetate, vitamin palmitate. What? <laughs> Sodium citrate. Coconut oil. Let's throw a little turmeric on there. It's for color. It's real fruit, though. No. This is real fruit. This, you know what the, the trend is with all of them? What we want, what the flesh desires, what we always fall for is man's perverted version of what God has already made. That's what we don't want what God made. We want what we made with what God made. Isn't it interesting that the flesh wants what it wants? Doesn't want what's good for it. It wants something that it believes that it created. The flesh desires to keep. I'm trying, I'm trying to get somebody just to see really practically in 2020 it's not going to be the grandiose drastic decisions that you make that will change your year it's going to be the small decisions the small i want to get real practical for a second it's going to be the small decision i'm gonna put this down today and i'm gonna take the extra 10 minutes and make the baked potato i'm gonna put this down today i'm gonna wash this off rub it off on my sleeve and i'm gonna take a bite out of crime i it's like we just gotta make Small, like what, what, what's so hard for people to change is they make these big statements and then when they don't fulfill the big statements, guilt sets in. I mean, healthy this year. And because you wanted to eat healthy this year, but they had two for one of these in Publix, you throw your whole diet out the window. I want to read my Bible this year. I'm going to do it every day. But then when you miss a day, I messed up. I can't. Ah. <laughs> I broke the trend. I might as well wait till next year. You going to put down life because you missed a day? Like, so, oh, I'm going to read 10 chapters a day. Stop. Read a ah, verse. Like get one good one. Just, 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 just one. Like you won't, you won't live in this place of like a spiritual failure if you take in like just a, like some of y'all want to try to like take a big bite out of God's word when he's like, just take a little bit at a time. I just want to be practical for you so that you can have a great year. You didn't fail yet. It's okay. Just take in a little bit at a time. Life is not about making the grandiose change. It's about every little decision that you make. Don't go vegan today. Instead of getting macaroni and cheese as a side, just get some broccoli. Little, small, don't try to pray for an hour. Say, God, this is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It's a prayer. No, 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 don't try to do too much. You'll get there. Over time, but take your time. See, you got to admit it. You've made decisions that have put you in bondage, but you can also make decisions that will set you free. We got to admit it. Our decisions have got us here, but we can make decisions that get us out. We are slaves to our decision. 
food is not bad, but people are slaves to overprocess things because they've made a decision. Money is not bad, but people are slaves to a fast lifestyle because they want to see it all come quickly. Sex is not bad. I know. <laughs> but people have become slaves to a hypersexualized lifestyle because everything in the media is sex. So we feel like having sex after marriage is only a fairy tale when it's actually God's plan. It's God's plan. Religion's not a bad word. But we become slaves to man-made rituals rather than a relationship with Christ. I want somebody to just hear me. If you hear nothing else I said today, just hear this. Jesus won't stop you from sinning, but he will give you a choice. <laughs> if you could just let that resonate in your spirit for a second. He's like, you know why? Because he's a gentleman. He's not going to force you. If he forces you, there's no love in that. Amen. He's not going to stop. I, I, I be, Pastor, man, like, why can't Jesus just stop me from doing the stuff I be doing? Because he loves you. He's not going to stop you. He's just going to give you a better option. Jesus will always be the better option because the truth is, ain't nothing like the real thing. You can live a processed life if you want to, but ain't nothing like the real thing. You can live your truth if you want to, but ain't nothing like the real thing because the truth will set you free. The best option we have is Jesus. Jesus does not point out your flaws to hold it over you, to make you feel bad about yourself or to make him feel better about himself. If Jesus is pointing out our sin problem, guess what? He has an answer. Better yet, he is the answer. He's the answer. Like, don't you hate those people that want to tell you all your problems but never come to you with solutions? That's not Jesus. He's like, man, you got a problem. But I'm the solution. This is Jesus. Well, I love what the Bible says in 1 John 1, 8 and 9. If we claim to be without sin, then we deceive ourselves. We're delusional. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Truth is, he already knows what you've done. He just wants to give you an option to choose him. God does not want you to admit your sins to accuse you. He wants to acquit you. He does not want to punish you. He wants to pardon you. He does not want to enslave you. He wants to save you. For you are no longer a slave to sin when you can admit that Jesus Christ is the only thing that can save you from yourself. You have a choice today. You can continue to live on your own power, continue to live on your own might, but you can be honest with yourself. Admit that you have a problem and grab a hold of the option of Jesus because he is the truth that will set you free. With every head bowed and every eye closed.